Coming up on Serial at Midnight, we are talking about more than 50 new releases. You don't want to miss this one. Play that surf guitar. Guys, hello and welcome to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath Holland, and this is legitimately over 50 releases. Fun fact, they've fallen twice. See, the thumbnail that I made for this video where I'm holding, this, it's the th thumbnail you just clicked, right, like, during that, they all fell. And then I put them back together, and I was recording my introduction, like, hey guys, coming up, and they fell again. <laughs> just sitting here, they fell. So, uh, hopefully, they don't fall a third time. There's so much to talk about in this episode. It's been a while since we've done one of these new release spotlights, because it's coming in faster than I can keep up with. 2023 is on track to be the biggest year in the history of home video. Uh, we are looking most years, you saw my interview with Ralph Tribby, hopefully from the DVD and Blu-ray release report, most years, 15, 16, 17,000 releases at the rate we're going 2023 looks like 30,000 releases. Now that's not just from the studios. That's also from other sources and what Mr. Tribby calls helpers, which is piracy. Uh, but this is all going to be legitimate stuff, but it's just, it just goes to show you what's happening right now is unprecedented. And I think we're all just holding on, right? We're just trying to absorb as much of it as we can. Uh, so without further ado, you know, I do, I do monthly spotlights on, on, uh, on Arrow. I do them on Kino Lorber, on Imprint, Umbrella Entertainment, but there's so much other thing, so many other things that I just haven't had time to make videos about or talk to you guys about. So let's kick it off with the Brave Archer collection from Shell Factory. Uh, I believe this is a website exclusive, which blows my mind because I would think that this would be huge. Maybe it was a licensing thing. Maybe they were only to, able to secure the license for a limited window, you know, for like if, it's 2,000 copies. I can't remember how many of these they pressed. It's all five Brave Archer movies with new special features, including a new documentary about the series uh, and website exclusive. So the reason I wanted to talk about this is because there are those of you who watch these videos that you won't, you're not going to see this in Target or Walmart or Best Buy. You're not even going to see it on Amazon. It's only on the Shout Factory store. So that's, I mean, I've heard from a lot of you guys and you're like, I didn't even know this stuff was coming out. So it's good and it's bad. Um, I don't want people to miss it. So I should also mention a lot of what we're going to talk about here. Pretty much all of what we're going to talk about here, I don't have anything to say about because I haven't watched it yet because it's coming in so fast. Uh, the Tiger Cage collection is also from Shout Factory. It's the three Tiger Cage movies with special features. This is not a limited uh, a, a website exclusive. This is everywhere. Uh, from the cool folks at Chameleon, this is the fourth, uh, fourth and fifth release from Chameleon Films. We've covered, uh, I did a video about the first three releases. They're really leaning into the Asian cinema uh, catalog and bringing movies that have never been given the TLC that they need, uh, the, the quality presentations that they deserve. So this is election and election two. Uh, and it's again, really loaded up with special features. Some of the people involved behind the scenes with Chameleon uh, do work with imprint. I'm not gonna say work for, do work with imprint. So that's why this does look a lot like an imprint release. And uh, with the, the slip cover and even the style of packaging We've got, the, it's on two discs. We have a booklet and it has reversible artwork with election. This is, so election one is on the that side and this is election two. But really, really nice. Again, uh, I will have more to say after I've watched it. Please, please keep your eyes peeled to serialatmidnight.com and to my Letterboxd account because that's where I do tend to write reviews but also be understanding that with me getting over a hundred releases every single month, and that's just the new disc stuff. That's not even streaming or theatrical. Uh, it's a lot to like <laughs> the, the reviews are slow coming right now. Um, there's a ton of stuff coming out from radiance. All, I'm going to show you guys. We've got four radiance releases. This is a company that I think is poised to directly compete with the Criterion Collection. That's the thing that I keep seeing is like Radiance is the new Criterion. Uh, we will see, but they're off to a strong start. So this is Red Sun. And what, well, you know, rather than me just sit here and talk, I'll hold them up and you can check them out. Beautiful packaging, all the stuff that we love as collectors, the reversible art wrap. This booklet is 
thick. I don't know how thick if that, yeah, you can see how thick that is. How many pages is this? This is 52 pages and it's mostly, mostly text. And I love it because that's how I prefer to consume my movie information is by reading about it via booklets. Uh, here is uh, The Sunday Woman. Music by Ennio Morricone. Same thing here. We got the booklets. Lots of special features too. Uh, we have the Iron Prefect. Oh, this still has some of the shrink wrap on it. Let me get that off. The Iron Prefect. Juliana Gemma. When I talk to you, but I should mention, in case this is one of your first videos with me or you haven't been here for a long time, I talked to Fran Simeone, the creator of Radiance, the, the, the head of Radiance, came from Arrow and has started Radiance Films. And uh, I talked to him about what his goals were with the line. And he talked about how he wanted to, he wanted to just bring some of his favorite movies to disc, but he also wanted to tap into uh, movies that haven't been given the kind of releases that they deserve. And one of the things that I was hopeful about and that I asked about was like, what about Italian cinema? Because we're getting, we're getting spaghetti Westerns, we're getting Giallo and things like that. But there's a lot of Italian movies that have not been given uh, res uh, presentations outside of Italy that I would love to see in English, like with subtitles and stuff. The thing about it is I'm just like brief diversion here. You could import some of those movies from Italy, but they're not subtitled and they're not dubbed. So unless you speak Italian, you don't know what's going on. So uh, it's time for some of these things to get uh, presented with like for the world. And I think that that's happening right now. And I'm excited about it. Uh, Yakuza Graveyard. Yakuza Graveyard. People always take me to task on my pronunciation. I do my best, but I'm not perfect. Uh, this has all the stuff that the others have. Here, I'm going to hold that up for I don't, I don't know if I'm holding these up long enough for you to freeze and read all the special features. But again, uh, booklets. So I, we're going to talk more. The, the thing I'm, I'm really excited about is the Franco Nero uh, trilogy of films that's coming out in, I think it's August now for the U.S. People are starting to get it in the U.K., I think. But in the, UK, in the U.S., I think we're getting it in August. And I know Mike Malloy contributed to those releases. I've talked to Mike Malloy here. I have so much respect for him and his knowledge of, uh, of, of those films. And uh, I'm really looking forward to talking to you guys about that. This is coming from... This is the, uh, the Laurel and Hardy Definitive Restorations. Now, this came out... I've already covered this a few years ago. Uh, this came out a couple of years ago. For, I guess it was from Kit Parker Films. I don't remember who distributed it. I reviewed it here on the channel. They're great. They're great restorations. Uh, it has, well, here, I'll hold this. This one's still in the shrink wrap because I'd like to give this away to one of you guys. Stay tuned for that. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do that yet. I need to I need to get to a point where I can actually give that my attention. But uh, they look great, and I had a blast going through these Laurel and Hardy uh, features at the time. This is coming with uh, Kit Parker Films in association with MVD Visual. So... Uh, that means wider distribution. MVD is a, you know, they're a distributor and that means a wider distribution. So you should be able to find this anywhere you would find uh, any other products. So Amazon, Walmart, Target, all that jazz. This one I'm curious about. This is coming from Liberation Hall. This is uh, Project ALF. The series ALF, which by the way, Shout Factory has picked up the rights to and I guess the restorations for that are still forthcoming. The uh, the new releases for ALF, the complete series, the cartoons. I think they've got the full um, license for ALF, I guess, except for Project ALF, which was the ALF ended on a cliffhanger. This was the, the thing that kind of wrapped everything up. It came out later. This was 96, 95. I have not watched this yet. Here's the thing that concerns me a little bit is that it's in widescreen. Now, this was a TV movie from 1995, it should not be in widescreen. So I'm wondering how they achieved that. If they cropped it, uh, if they have, uh, if it was matted and they were able to just remove the mat and open it up, if it was shot that way. I, I mean, again, I don't know because I haven't watched it yet. That's my concern. But I love the idea of it. I love the idea of ALF being on Blu-ray and having the end of it. Um, so we'll see. That's, that's all I'm going to say because I don't know. We will see.
I think there's a lot of people that are just going to be happy to have this. And here's what I know. A lot of people don't care. <laughs> there's a lot of people out there like, eh, it's white screen, it's cropped. I don't care. So, you know, I do, but I don't represent everybody. And some of you guys, you know, more power to you. This is interesting. I have spent a little time with this because when this came in, I was really curious. Stoogerama is coming from, this is MVD again in association with Kit Parker Films, which is the same people that did the Laurel and Hardy set. And it's sort of a grab bag of odds and ends from the Three Stooges history. Uh, it starts with a documentary. It, it was an episode of, I think, the A&E biography series back in the 90s. I think it's 90... I can't remember. I want to say it's 90... Is it 95? Anyway, it's an episode of biography from a... It's a biographical episode is what it is. They've expanded it. It's about 10 minutes longer now. I think it's an hour and three minutes. It's really well done. It's upscaled from uh, standard definition materials, but I got to tell you, it upscaled really well. And it's just talking about the history of the Three Stooges, you know, the history of the family, because it was mostly the Howard family, uh, Shimp, Larry, uh, Curly, and then just the evolution. It's, it's, it's a very serious biography on the Three Stooges. Then the other two discs are like B-roll footage, home video, not home video, home movies from the Stooges, uh, interviews, and just odds and ends. It's a real, like, I guess you'd call it like a potpourri of material for the th Three Stooges. And I'm still working, like some of it, I'm like, I, I don't care about this. And some of it, I'm like, well, this is really interesting. Uh, your, it's, your level of, of return is going to come down to how much you expect from it, I think. There are no, you know, it's not like a collection of Three Stooges shorts. It is literally for the Three Stooges collector that already has everything else. So a lot of this stuff is making its debut here. Uh, and again, I mean, it looks great. It's a nice archive of Stooges material. So I'm keeping working, my, I'm continuing to work my way through that. Oh, there's like a Shimp short before, the, like outside of the Three Stooges, some Shimp stuff. When he was, because uh, he did, his, he had his own run. Shimp outside of the Stooges in the 30s had his own run, and some of that stuff's there that's never been on uh, Blu-ray before. So I mean, it's it's cool. From who's this? this is MVD Visual with Cleopatra is Shin Ultraman. Uh, you know, I love Ultraman. I haven't caught up with this one yet because honestly, there's more Ultraman than I've been able to keep up with. That's the theme of this video. Is like it's just too much. I'm drowning in new material, which is great. Uh, it's a good problem to have, but it just means that, like, I haven't seen this. I want to see this, but I haven't seen it yet. And uh, I know that this is well-received, as I guess what I should say. And it's got the original Japanese language and an English dub. For those of you who don't like to, don't like to read. Mill Creek Entertainment, uh, a Maria Bamford, two stand-up spot, two, it's two stand-up specials on one DVD. They've previously done this for Mike Berbiglia and for Jim Gaffigan. And now we've got Maria Bamford. And I think there's a fourth one that's coming out too, but I don't believe that I have it here. Ah, oh, this, see, this is how things are out of order. Ultraman, more, more Ultraman from Mill Creek Entertainment. This is Ultraman versus the Red King. So Ultraman, uh, Mill Creek's license with uh, Subaraya Productions, everything that they had licensed, they've pretty much released now and I'm, I'm looking on my shelf like it's a lot of stuff it's a lot of releases now they're going back and they're doing this is a compilation this is are these numbered no but it's a two disc set 16 episodes and a booklet it's the ultra it is numbered ultraman battle kaiju series one so they're going to go through i mean i don't know how many they're going to do but they're going to tackle uh you know ultraman it's a, it's a compilation right so this uh this, like from all the different Ultraman series, Ultraman, well, Ultraman, Ultraman, the Ultraman, Ultraman 80, Ultraman Max, Ultraman X. Um, so that's cool. And it's got a booklet here too. I haven't even taken this out of the shrink wrap. Should we do that right here? That looks cool. Ah, let's do it. I can do it quickly. I've gotten so fast at opening releases. I just use my thumbnail and just go like shred and then I'm in. All right. Two disc sets. There they are. Looks like we got some interior artwork. That's nice. And is the book going to be like a tech guide? What are we looking at here? 
told you guys before, I read to my daughter's class when she was in kindergarten, and that's like, while many of the Ultra Kaiju were given bizarre powers and energy weapons, you like hold it up so everybody can see. That's how I feel when I show these off. Uh, text about the Red King, different versions of the Red King. That's cool. Yeah, this seems like a good way to go. So I know there's a lot of people uh, that asked me how I felt, like what I thought was a good jumping on point for Ultraman, and uh, this is a good way to go. What I believe some of these were English subtitles. Okay. I was going to say, does this have the dub? Okay. It's not the place for me to just read the packaging. Uh, from, uh, who is this? From 88 Films. This is uh, brand new. This is Magic Cop. Say this is brand new. Some of these have been out for a couple of months. This just hit my mailbox. Magic Cop. Uh, it is a, a Stephen Tung film mixing comedy, action, and esoteric lore. Magic Cop sees the incomparable lamb at his brilliant best. Does this have alternate reversible? Yes, it does. Nice. Let me flip that around. Again, all these companies tapping into these Asian cinema licenses got our double-sided poster here with the new artwork and original artwork what features are here oh a lot of them let you freeze that and read all that Taiwanese cut uh, back to Mill Creek they have just issued white noise and white noise 2 I don't I think I even knew there was a white noise too. Um, on a, it's two features on one Blu-ray. Some people get pretty ticked off about that. The price is right. They're like ten or twelve bucks. Um, as bonus features too. I just realized they don't often give us bonus features with these double features. We got deleted scenes. Hearing is believing. The actual EVP sessions. You guys believe in EVP? Wait in the comments below. We'll have a huge EVP debate in the comments. Uh, yeah, that's really cool. Also, they've issued this action movie night with Conspiracy, uh, The Contractor, The Hardcore, and Vertical Limits. I've seen some of these. I have not seen all of these. I really like Van Damme's later era. After Van Damme stopped being like an A-list box office draw and went to basically direct-to-video, I guess this stuff still comes out theatrically, in other areas, but I, I really like latter day Van Damme. He's doing some really interesting, can still doing some really interesting things. Uh, the event from Mill Creek Entertainment. This is the complete, it was a one season show. Uh, it is a jump aboard the hot tank. Cause I was just reading to you guys, Jason Ritter, who's the voice of Dipper from gravity falls, by the way. Um, let's see. It, uh, they unwittingly exposed a cover up so big. It could change the fate of all mankind. Uh, from the executive producer of 24, it's a five disc set, 22 episodes. They've really done it right too, because every disc has its own tray and hub. And we've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four episodes, one, two, three, four, five episodes, one, two, three, four episodes. So none of this like eight episodes on a single disc crap that we sometimes see. Not just not necessarily the same from Mill Creek, but from other people. I think Mill Creek's done that sometimes too, just loading up a disc. Uh, that's that's what we want is like minimal compression. This Richard Pryor double feature just hit my mailbox and I immediately popped in Which Way Is Up. I did not laugh at all <laughs> during Which Way Is Up, but it's good to have. I really like Richard Pryor. I covered the, uh, I was looking around to see, it's, it's, uh, it's over there. The Richard Pryor uh, Time Life box set, which collects a lot of his stand-up and television appearances. Um, I, I have a lot of respect for Richard Pryor. He was a pioneer. He was very, he was a fascinating person. And I'm happy to see some of these movies that have not been uh, available before arriving, even if they are on a double feature disc. There is no, there are no features here, but they're subtitled, by the way. So that's good. Oh, these are cool. These are from my friend Dan Persons, who I talked to uh, here on the channel about his 3D initiative. So uh, 3D Brains is a... So he's doing this company where he's taking movies that were never... Like, you know, classic... Uh, fan, uh, the Phantom Planet and uh, House on Haunted Hill. Movies that were never known as 3D features and giving them a 3D presentation. You can find them on his Etsy store. I'll 
link to it in the description of this video. But he's hand burning these, burned exclusively for cereal at midnight. Both of these say that. Uh, they, he's given me the, the 3D glasses. And I got a note here that uh, the Phantom Planet 3D is on track for a mid-July release. Every one of them has this hand-drawn... Um, it's, it's like, I mean, it's, it, it's handmade is what it is. It's not for everybody, but it's for somebody. And I heard a lot of support when I had him on my channel, people that were really excited. I appreciate his attention to the spines that they, they do their uniform. That's, that's nice. Every feature has uh, bonus stuff on there too. Sometimes it'll be a second, like a short or uh, like a making of or something like that. Like, you know, like um, the Phantom Planet has a short thing about the Goodman cut. And it's got a um, another, I think it's a 10 minute feature. This might've been the one that has a 20 minute feature. Uh, so he's given you a lot of value. So if you're into 3D and you love classic kitschy movies like this, uh, you definitely wanna check out um, what, uh, what Dan Persons is doing through his 3D initiative. Link in the description. From MVD in association with, uh, I don't know, it's just MVD. Oh, hold on. Moonstone. Okay, we have Redline. I've not seen this movie. This certainly looks like Fast and Furious uh, exploitation, but I don't know. So Nathan Phillips, uh, Nadia Bjorlin, Angus McFadden, Tim Matheson, eh? um, Johnny Quest is in this, you guys, and Eddie Griffith. I don't know, but it looks interesting. It's got a uh, making a feature and Red line at the LA Auto Show feature uh, in standard definition. This came from, it's in 2007. So definitely an exploitation movie. I don't remember this. I don't know if it was direct to video when it came out in 2007 or not. From Dark Force Entertainment, we have a double feature. This is uh, Whose Child Am I and Weekend Murders. Actually, let me make sure all this is okay to show on camera. Yeah, it's all right. The drive-in features that uh, Dark Force does, where they basically just raw scan uh, battered prints, is what it is, and they're like, "It's a drive-in double feature," and that's what a lot of that. There's charm to that. Um, here, I'll just hold it up. It's all the all the inform information you need to see there. All right, last one in this stack before we move on to stack number two. Uh, Noon Wine, if you're like, what Noon Wine, directed by Sam Peckinpah. That's that's what makes us notable, because this is for the Peckinpah collectors. Um, this is a television movie, or a television special, original air date November 23rd, 1966, two versions on one disc, as originally broadcast and commercial free. So I guess that means that the broadcast version has the commercials intact. Special thanks to the UCLA Film Library. It's from Liberation Hall. Haven't watched it, obviously, but for the Peckinpah fan, Noon Wine is now on DVD. Uh, let's see, Pilgrimage, this is a, oh, this is a review copy, not for sale. So this is gonna be one of those that's hitting, uh, it's Indie Picks Unlimited Prime Video Channels. Okay, this is my screener. I probably shouldn't have included it here, but hey, this is, a, this is coming out, Pilgrimage, or it's out now. Uh, I'll let you read about it too. All right, hold on. I gotta start. I gotta start a new stack down here. All right. And somebody said one time, it looks like you're just throwing them down in the garbage. No, I've got a. I got a stack down here. Uh, Film Hawk. This is a documentary about Bob Hawk's life. Kevin Smith is heavily involved in this. It's DVD. Oh, here's another uh, indie picks. A handful of water. All right. This is interesting. Space Monster uh, Wang, hold on, Wang Magui, Wang Magui. <sighs> Somebody's gonna have something to say about that. Anyway, this is a, um, it's a kaiju film from 1967 from uh, SRS 30. And I, the, the thing about, it's loaded with features. Here's all, I'm gonna hold this up. The thing that's interesting about this is that this company has decided to sell the DVD everywhere, widely, but if you go through them on their website, you can buy it on Blu-ray. So the Blu-ray doesn't have a wide release, but the DVD does. Um, I'm not sure that that's the best decision, 
but they didn't. Nobody asked me. That's just my opinion. I know you guys. We want a Blu-ray. So this has it's a new uh, you know uh, full bells and whistles commentary. Um, acquiring the monster, the fans speak, official theatrical trailer, kaiju trailers, SRS trailers. Uh, I think a lot of us would really like to have this on Blu-ray. So head if you do want the Blu-ray, head over to their website and um, and you can find it there. This uh, Dinner with Lloyd. This is an older documentary that's just getting a DVD release. This is. Uh, manufactured on demand. I'm I'm wearing out. Can you tell? Like I've been talking really quickly, passionately for almost a half an hour now. And, and and full disclosure, I did takes before the one you're watching right now. I think this is take like ten. So uh, I'm wearing out. And it's also hot. It's like 96 percent humidity today too. Uh, this is not good. I'm so sorry to say this. This is a. Uh, it's just not... I love Lloyd Kaufman. I love Trauma. This feels... It's no budget, and it feels like it. And uh, it says it's 68 minutes. About half of that is a tour of the Trauma offices full of slapstick and they'll intercut trailers. I, I just... It kind of bummed me out because I would really love to see a full-length documentary about Lloyd Kaufman done with higher production values because he certainly deserves it. But anyway, if you're a fan of Dinner with Lloyd, this is available outright. It's available right now, but it is manufactured. Uh, it's, I don't know if that's showing up, but it's it's blue, purple. All right, I'm gonna speed up. From Cheesy Movies, The Haunted Palace, uh, there's nothing, they haven't restored this. These are public domain movies or movies that have transfers in the public domain. And it's the same as what you would see on YouTube, but you own them here. I think they are also burned on demand. No, these are factory pressed. This one is of special interest to me. I hope it gets a better presentation one day, but it's Moon Runners. If you love The Dukes of Hazard, this was written and directed by Guy Waldron. It is essentially The Dukes of Hazard R-rated movie. It's not rated, but it would be rated R probably. And it's very adult. And you can see how he took this idea. I mean, look at this cover. It's about moonshine runners. Jake runs the... Let's see, Grady and Bobby Lee run moonshine for Uncle Jesse. But it's less lovable, more threatening, is what it comes down to. And I, I really like this. I reviewed this. It's 1976. I reviewed this uh, years ago when I did a year-long written fo series on the, the movies of 1976. And you see how it evolved into Dukes of Hazard. You see how Dukes of Hazard evolved from this. Uh, I think they even shot it in Georgia. I, it's produced by Bob Clark, by the way. That's a big deal. Uh, but I think they shot it in Georgia like they shot the first season of Dukes of Hazard, And it just has a feel. It has that 70s kind of dangerous White Lightning, Burt Reynolds, like that kind of a feel. Cult Epics, A Question of Silence. Tell you what. <laughs> Let's take a break. I'll be right back. Right after these... Uh, messages from myself. All right, we are we're back. Let's finish it up. By the way, I checked my phone during the break. This was take twenty four. Started the video twenty four times. I'm a perfectionist when it comes to like how it feels, how it, like the, what the tone is, and if I start the video and I feel like the enthusiasm isn't quite where it needs to be. I just keep going. So that explains a lot, doesn't it? Uh, amnesia. This comes from Cult Epics, and it is... Um, nah. <laughs> I'm not even going to try to read all of this. To you guys, this is a limited edition with two bonus films by Martin Kuhlhoven, Dark Light from 97, and Suzy Q from 99. Has anybody seen this? And if you have, what do you... What do you think about it? Uh, Lita, the myth comes to life, both 3D and standard 2D versions on one disc. By the way, I should mention when it comes to Dan Persons, um, 3D films, they are anaglyph and I showed you they come with the glasses, right? They're anaglyph. They're not polarized 3D. They're anaglyph. They're the red and blue. Uh, this does not have glasses. 
but it's a captivating fever dream that uses music, sound effects, and startling imagery to weave its magical spell. Okay. Who is this from? This is from Peyton Films, Archive Media. I don't know. Classic flicks. I, I did a review for this. Uh, I believe I maybe I did a one minute review, but I don't think we've talked about it here. This is Blondie, the complete 1957 TV series. Um, there was a ton of movies that came out for Blondie. I'm not going to repeat myself from that review. Check out the one minute review for Blondie. But uh, they look great. They've been restored very well. This is this is Blu-ray. And if you're a classic TV fan that would like to have Blondie, Classic Flicks has put it out. 88 Films has released Gorgeous. Haven't watched it yet. Jackie Chan. This is a newer... What year is this movie? 2011. Another example of what I was talking about with all of the... Um, all these movies from Asia hitting... What's the difference? Oh, a reversible... <laughs> Reversible art rep. Uh, it does have the double-sided poster with both pieces of artwork on it and a booklet. Let's see what get to the table of contents. Well, there's the table of contents. Okay. Anybody seen Gorgeous? What do you think about it? McBain, Christopher Walken, Maria Conchito Alonso is in this as well. This is from Synapse. Synapse. Someone emailed me and said, you're saying, because I say Synapse. Does anyone remember, right, by the way, that's an acceptable pronunciation of the word. Does anybody remember that Bush song from, I think it's from Razorblade Suitcase, where he says, Synapse again. I think it's okay to, anyway, apparently it is synapse and I've been saying it wrong and someone, <laughs> I'm not upset about it. I'm just saying it. I got called out for saying synapse wrong. It is from synapse. Um, and it had, I don't, did this have new 5.1 surround soundtrack, audio commentary by the director and film historian, Chris Pogiali, good, great commentator, uh, newly translated, removable English subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing. Cool, 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 cool stuff. This one uh, is exciting. This is a Mike Hammer. This is the 97 to 98 series. You know, uh, Stacey Keach was Mike Hammer on and off several times. But uh, this is from uh, Film Chest Media. Film Chest, Film Chest Media Group. Uh, we've talked about Film Chest stuff for a while. They were doing, I believe they were doing some public domain releases in the earlier days. Now they're licensing some things. They did the Lost World syndicated series. Um, I gave a copy of that away. I think I gave that away on Twitter. So that's an incentive to follow Serial at Minute on social media. But they, um, it, was, it was, you know, like Millennium Era syndicated series, The Lost World, based on the Arthur Conan Doyle. Like dinosaurs are everywhere. Uh, and then now they're doing Mike Hammer, which is really cool because. Um, I don't even know if this ever got released on DVD before. And they've done a nice job with it, too. It's, uh, is this swing? How does it, yeah. Swinging doors right there. And the booklet tells you everything that's, uh, it's like the episode guide, a multiple page episode guide. It's just well done. It's hard to think of, um, <laughs> leaning into a certain kind of storytelling here. It's hard to associate this character with the 90s to me, but and maybe it was hard to associate him with the 70s when he when Stacy Keach did was my camera in earlier. That's not sitting right. I'll fix it later. All right. Uh, these two come from uh, these are cauldron releases that have been here for a while. I, I've posted about these on social media, but this is the first time they're hitting a YouTube video. Uh, classics, man, absolute classics. Shanghai Joe is one of the East meets West uh, martial arts meets spaghetti Western premises, and it's good stuff. And um, it's 
I'm tempted to just start reading. Uh, I'll hold it up and you guys can check it out. And uh, Convoy Busters, which has an interview with uh, the director and no, that's the star. Hold on, interview. All right, let's hold that up too. This is why I don't do a lot of long videos. I know some people can go live for hours at a time. I don't seem to be able to do that. Mike Malloy, um, Maurizio Merli, a lethal hunter of subtle variation with tough guy film expert Mike Malloy, commentary by Mike Malloy and Mike Martinez, and archive interviews. Uh, definitely do check these out. I really like what Cauldron is doing. And I'd like to talk to them. Maybe I could get, uh, you know, part of the Cauldron um, origin story is that one of the people that is uh, one of the founders is the founder of Diabolic DVD. <clears throat> Stale Popcorn and Sticky Floors is a... I haven't watched this either, right? So this is from Wild Eye. Go back to when exploitation movies ruled the box office. Take a front row seat as we sit in and chat with some of the creators and stars of the best and most beloved action or no, exploitation and grindhouse movies of the 70s and the 80s. Anything in here? I'm not going to show that, just in case. It was a bloody eye. I'll let your imagination run wild. Like Hulkamania. Violent Streets, uh, Hideo Gosha. We talked about the Samurai Wolf duology. Um month or so ago i don't know time I, I just spend all my time making videos now so time becomes wibbly wobbly timey wimey i'm like i it might have been a month ago it might have been three months ago i'm not exactly sure but the same director hideo gosha directed violent streets and this is coming from the same uh distributor this is coming from film movement classics and um it's got some good uh, on disc features here as well as a book? Booklet? Who's doing the commentary here? Oh, there isn't a commentary. The uh, essay is by Mark Schilling. <clears throat> All right. Calamity of Snakes. This is from... Who is this from? Unearthed Classics. This is really interesting to me. Uh, it's classic... Like... What year is this? This is 2003 Golden Sun film, but this was this movie made in 2003? I thought it was earlier than that. Anyway, I mean, it is what it looks like. It's um, sort of martial arts and snakes. <laughs> but, uh, see, this is why it's hard to do these videos, too, because I, I haven't seen them yet, and I'm like... Ah. From Shaw to Snakes, the, version, the venom and violence of early Chinese-language horror cinema. Reptilian Recollections, that's an interview, the original English dub, commentary with Nathan Hamilton. There's a cruelty-free version. Okay, that tells me that a lot, a lot of snakes were harmed in the making of this movie. Alternate version, alternate credits, and a gallery. Uh, from Film Movement comes, this, see, this should have been with the other one, but they fell. Moonlighting Wives and the Naked Fog. Uh, Joseph W. Sarno, retrospective feature. These have been on disc before, but I can't remember from who. I, at least I believe they have. Sometimes it's hard to keep up. Uh, this is in association with Something Weird video, which is great. Uh, we got bonus features. We got uh, commentary with Tim Lucas on one of these, uh, comment, uh, interview with Joe Sarno, and an uh, interview with a cinematographer. Both films are on one disc. We've got a uh, quadruple, I think. Let me see. No, hold on. That's something else. Hold on. Yes, these come from Scorpion Releasing. And I don't know. I just want to take a minute to uh, say rest in peace to, uh, to Walt Olson. We've now lost both of the Olson brothers. So Code Red... Um, you know, Bill Banana Man Olsen and, uh, and now Scorpion releasing with, with Walt Olsen. I don't know what's going to happen. With these companies or those releases, both of the brothers released movies uh, like these that really spoke to my kind of movie fan, the, the video era, the video generation. And uh, I just want to say rest in peace and thanks 
for all that you did to, to save these movies. Uh, so we have Opposing Force. <clears throat> It's a 20, 2019 master. I think what's the case with some of these is that these were really, um, like maybe on the Ronin Flix website and now they're getting wider releases that you can buy from Amazon and, you know, anywhere else. So here's Opposing Force. Here is uh, POW, The Escape. David Carradine sort of uh, tapping into that Delta Force Rambo First Blood Part Two, Vietnam veteran exploitation cycle. Probably shot in the Philippines, but I don't know. It's, it's Canon film. I should mention that um, Austin Trunick. Austin Trunick, you can update to. Well, he probably already has it because it's uh, it's probably been out on Ronin Flix's website for a while. The Wicked Die Slow, which is a rare, like really hard spaghetti western. Is how I would, but I don't. Is it? It's not actually Italian, is it? It's a Canon film release as well. Now seeing this long lost, brutally adult western, not only from a brand new HD master, but the, for for the first time in its scope ratio and also uncut. Uh, and the Killing Box on license from MGM. So we'll see what happens with Scorpion. Uh, I, I just don't know. This is from Troma, Lust for Freedom. Except for Rikers Island in Alabama, there is no worse lockup. All right, here's some indie stuff to close this out, but I'll go fast. I'm gonna, you know what, I'm gonna save one of these for the last, because I have the most to say, because I actually watched it. Woman of the Photographs. <clears throat> this is an Asian film from uh, Japan. Uh, this is from, it's another IndiePix Prime Video screener copy, not for sale, so Shabu. Is this one? No, this is an actual retail release from Film Movement. A Radiant Girl. Um, where is this from? It's in French. It's from France. And last, no, I'm sorry, hold on. We have, we have one more. Warm Water, uh, Under a Red Bridge. Now, I don't know anything about this movie, but when I was reading about this movie, I was like, what? This sounds absolutely insane. I'm going to hold that up. I'm going to let you read about it. <laughs> some magic realism tied into some uh, adult themes there. Last but not least, this is coming from... Who is this coming from? I don't even know. It doesn't say. It is psychedelic experiences now i'm a big fan of 60s psychedelia and uh, you know psychedelic music and even psychedelic imagery things like that i was really curious about this it's not great they've used a lot of public domain like film clips you know that uh just seem like you know stock footage sort of thing and the narration that seems to be taken from wikipedia i really thought that the narrator was a computer I thought that the narrator was a computer because it sounds like this, but it's a person. It's credited as a person. Um, most of the information does seem to come from like Wikipedia and journals, but the whole, it's just really talking about the psychedelic experience, mind altering and expanding uh, pharmaceuticals, let's say, and the history of that in our society. So, I mean, it's interesting but it's very, very dry. It's 45 minutes long. So if there's anybody out there who's like really into fish or the Grateful Dead or like, you know, um, turning on, tuning in and dropping out and you want a DVD, I will say this. It does have some cool fractals, like psychedelic, you know, fractals and stuff that are inserted into some of the stock footage. Um, but it was just, it could have been more. So I was a little disappointed by it. So guys, we did it <laughs> over 50 releases. Uh, I don't know when we're going to do this again, but, uh, let's talk about, obviously the, I didn't have much to say about a lot of this stuff. If you've seen it, if you can add to the conversation, well, I'd be mighty obliged to you. So, uh, let's do continue the conversation in the comments below. Subscribe to this channel so you never miss coverage. And, um, thank you. I appreciate you for being here. Take care until next time. I will catch you later.